Now, Lord, may these words be to your glory and to the welfare of all your people for us to grow in your mission. Amen. Today we start a, a new summer series. In fact, it's the last of our summer series, and it's on the theme of mission. So for today and for the next three weekends, we will be lifting up Bible passages that all relate and help to flesh out this theme of mission. And since this is the first of the four weekends, I want to give some rock-solid foundations to this theme of mission. And so I've entitled my message today, Mission Rocks, for two reasons. First, because serving in Christ's name really does rock. It's, 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 it's a bold adventure. It's fun. It's exciting. It rocks. But secondly, because I literally do have some rocks with me today, <laughs> four rocks to be, uh, in fact, four rocks each with a phrase that helps us today lay this foundation of mission that relate to mission. And they are God-centered, sent out, variety of gifts, and Yegum. So four rocks, the first being God-centered. This is where it all begins. I'm going to put that right here. Mission is God-driven, God-initiated. It's not something, just some clever human ideas or something we do on the fringe or in the pastime, as a pastime when we don't have anything else to do. No, it's missio dei. That's Latin for God's mission. And now we might say, well, that seems so obvious. But sometimes it's not. I don't remember which theologian said this, but I really like this quote, and it goes like this. The church doesn't have a mission. God's mission has a church. Okay? The church doesn't have a mission as it's some kind of commodity. No, but rather God's mission has a church, and that's keeping it you see, so because we're not just called to a, do a merry-go-round of activities just to be busy. We always, the reason we, we exist is because of God's mission. As a church, we always stand under the movement, the direction, the will of our sovereign God. What is mission? I often like to <clears throat> refer to a little book called Crazy Talk. It's uh, done by a, some semi uh, seminary professors at Luther, and it's called a not-so-stuffy dictionary for theological terms. And this week I looked up mission, and I liked what it said. Mission, the greatest party ever. What God is up to for you, for your neighbor, and for cr all creation. It's what God is up to. And our presence, our participation is boldly requested. And the page on, in here on mission then kind of puts it in a neat way in an invitation of the who and the what and the where. Who is invited? Well, all of us and all of, all, all of us sinners. And what? God's mission is to love to save, to bless, to free all creation. You see, this isn't some little thing. It is of cosmic proportion and of ultimate significance and joy. And where does it take place? Where? Wherever the power of sin is causing bondage, despair, brokenness, sinfulness, injustice, loneliness. There, God's mission is at work, and we're invited, but it is God-centered. That's the first rock. The second rock that helps lay the foundation today that relates to mission is the phrase, sent out. I'm going to set that right next to God-centered, sent out. You know, if you look around today at healthy churches, you will see this 
quality or this value at its core. It, 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 healthy churches are outward focused. Not inward, but outward focused. Where God's people, having been saved, set free unconditionally by God's grace and have heard the word, go, get out of here. Get out of these four walls and shine. We are, you see, the sent ones. Sent out of here to be, as we heard in our gospel today, to be salt, to be light. And in our gospel day, we heard the, our marching orders that we, we, we give at every baptism. Did you hear it? To let your light so shine before others that they may see your good works and give glory to our Father in heaven. That's what we're sent out in our baptismal identity with that baptismal calling. The bishop of our southwestern Minnesota synod, Bishop John Anderson, often will use kind of a three phrase or a three sentence um, uh, 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 um, introduction with us when we're at a, at a teaching seminar. And he'll say, okay, here's who we are. Three parts. He'll say, every congregation is a, is a mission outpost. Every pastor is a mission director. And every baptized person is a missionary for the sake of God's world. Isn't that good? That's who we are. We are sent out. Nearly every worship service here at Celebration ends with the sending, doesn't it? We'll say, go in peace, serve the Lord, and we say, thanks be to God. Last Sunday was in the back, the end of the service, and I said, go in peace, serve the Lord. But eight-year-old Jonah Ambrosier was sitting right up here in the front row, one of these front rows, and he heard that sending. And instead of sending, saying, thanks be to God, he just did a really loud and proud fist bump. Okay. <laughs> much to the light of all the people sitting up here. And it was just a, okay, kind of a, let's do this. You know, Jonah has it right. We're sent out with that call, and we get to respond, okay, let's do this. We're sent out to be salt, to be light, young and old. And there'd be many examples that I could raise up from our congregation, but one in particular that was just such a delightful one this week. We had day camp here this week. And our Luther Crest counselors were here. Hmm, that's interesting that we're getting that feedback. Our Luther Crest counselors were here for, and, and the week was at Watab, except Thursday was here at, because of the rain. And the Luther Crest counselors Oh, they bring such wonderful songs and music and skits. And the program on Thursday afternoon, the same way. So many delightful songs about sharing Jesus' love and being a light. And um, right after the, uh, uh, of the program and, and at the end of day camp, Nellie Burnett went to Colburn's with her mom. Was it right after day camp? Or a, and, and, and went to the little Colburn's. Let's watch. It's a very brief uh, video. Let's just watch Nelly. <laughs> she saw you. Uh, that's being light. Right there in Colburn's. <laughs> Our God is an awesome God. Angela said that many people joined in singing <laughs> or humming along. That's a great example of being sent out, getting out of these four walls to be that light and being salt in our world. So God-centered, sent out, and the third rock with a phrase for that relates to mission is variety of gifts. You see, it takes all of us. As we heard in 1 Corinthians 12, we are one body. We are the body of Christ. We don't all have the same gifts. 
And God has, has made us that way. We need each other. When the Apostle Paul is writing to the church at Corinth, the church is fighting. They're fighting over whose gift is better, whose gift is greater. And they're jockeying and they're fighting. And Paul says, stop it, people. And then he gives us this wonderful body imagery saying, you know, if the whole body were an eye, where would the hearing be? If the whole body were hearing, where would the sense of smell be? He says, we are one with many gifts, many members. It's not about competition. It's about mutual love and cooperation. So much so that if one member suffers, we all suffer. If one is honored, we all rejoice. But maybe you've been hiding some gifts that God is calling you to share. I read a great question in a reflection this week. It said, what is holding you back from using your gifts more fully in the kingdom? Is fear, fear of failure, fear of being laughed at, fear of not measuring up? What holds you back? God has called all of us in our baptism. God is continuing to call you today to be salt, to be light, and to serve without fear. Because God's mission takes a variety of gifts. God-centered, sent out variety of gifts. And the last, our fourth, is the rock, Yegum. Young adults in global mission. On this very special day, as we will commission Meg and Hannah for a year of service with young adults in global mission. Now, Yegum is a program of the ELCA, and it invites young adults ages 21 to 29 to this transformative year long journey uh, to serve. We're going to watch just a one-minute video, and this was shown at our recent um, Synod Assembly. And Meg will be the speaker for all four because uh, we have two from Celebration, Hannah and Meg, and two more from our Synod. Let's watch. Ever since my first mission trip, I realized that as much as I gave communities, they always gave me more. I came back changed from these trips. And I heard that Jessica was coming to Celebration to talk about Cambodia, and she'd been there for a year. I've been to Cambodia, and I was only there for three weeks, and I thought, wow, I want to go see what she's going to talk about. She talked about this awesome program, Young Adults in Global Mission. And then afterwards, I pulled her aside and talked to her for a good half hour, and all of a sudden, I just felt called. I'd never heard of Yegum, but I realized I wanted to do this, so I quick threw together an application, and now I'm going to Mexico, and I'm so excited. I'm so excited to be joining three other wonderful young women from the Southwestern Minnesota Synod, and here's where they are going. are so grateful for the support we are receiving from the Southwestern Minnesota Synod and to all of you for the support you are giving us. Thanks for walking together. Hannah and Meg, it, we are so proud of the two of you and so proud, aren't we, to be walking with them. Let us share that right now. We've never... <clears throat> We've never had any Yegums from Celebration, and you too will be our first. You too have both been raised from your baptisms to let your light shine. And now, Hannah, we commission you today to let that light shine in Rwanda and Meg in Mexico. And you both have said, like little Jonah Ambrosier, okay, let's do this. And we are so delighted to walk with you. And know that you don't go alone. The Lord our God goes with you, giving you courage, strength for each day. And we go with you, your church family. In our love, our prayers, our support, we go with you. 
and know that you will be changed. And we look forward to hearing those stories of how God will use this time. For God, you see, is already at work in that community in Rwanda, in that community in, in Mexico, and you will join in with your unique gifts and talents to shine. And know that as you get on that plane next Tuesday for Chicago for orientation, and then a few days after to Rwanda and to Mexico, Hannah and Meg, that you can continue to say, okay, God, let's do this. For God has something great for both of you. Mission rocks. God-centered, sent out variety of gifts, and today a special way, Yegum. People of God, hear your baptismal call to let your light so shine before others that they may see your good works and glorify our Father in heaven. And together, we can all say, can I have a fist pump? Okay. Amen. Let us stand now and sing in praise of our Father.